Hello, my name is Denny. Uh, welcome to my fifth episode of my podcast stroke vlog called My Imperfect Knitting Life, where I go through my knitting projects, um, a little bit about what I'm up to generally in life, and also my mini commercial spinning mill that I bought. And I'm in the process of getting that set up. Um, hello, little red. Yes, you're very sweet. I thought maybe we'd start off with a little red on here because we see pictures, but um, she's usually sleeping by the curtain there when I'm doing my podcasts. But first thing in the morning, she's quite affectionate and she wants a little bit of attention. You're going to go down, little red? I'll pop you down. Yes, you're so sweet. Bit of a licky dog. Both dogs I've had have been quite licky dogs. Now, um... In this episode, what I'd like to talk about is my knitting, first of all. So I have a couple of finished projects and I have um, one teensy little work in progress and um, a bit of an update on the mill. So I think maybe I should just get going. So the first thing that I want to talk about that I've finished knitting is this top. Yeah, so show that close up. So anybody who has watched my previous episodes will know that I have actually knitted with this yarn before and it is um, Isaga um, Silk Mohair and also Holst Garn. So one strand of each knitted together on a four millimeter needle. So I did a funny thing again. I started off a pattern and then just finish it off the way I wanted which is sort of what I normally do but the basis of the pattern that, that I used was in the Lane magazine it's a really nice magazine in the Lane magazine it's called Lento and that gave me the setup for the um, front sleeves and back and I also followed the short row shaping and the other detail was that sort of just very simple sort of um it's a raglan but it's not a single it's not a single forward back it just gives you that little double double knit oh, i don't know what you call it that finish this i liked it anyway i'll pop it on and i'll show you um i will put the details of that inside the comment not comments the details of my podcast okay so what I love about this is the wool fabric is so light and fluffy. I wore it yesterday and got a few comments on it. Um, what I also like is it's a fairly classic style. So I'm sure that some people would think it's quite boring, but I like it. It's very flexible. It's very usable with lots of different things. So started off at the top, um, neck down, top down, and then did some short row shaping at the back and then just kept doing a raglan increase every second row until I was happy. I mean, it maybe is a little bit big, but that's fine. I'm happy with that. Did the body down to the length that I wanted. Just a basic little knit one, pearl one rib. I was actually going to do um, a lace edge, but I thought, no, I will just do a normal rib. So I sort of decreased... Um, before the ribbing, I did knit two together every third stitch, and then I just finished it off with a nice little knit one, pull one rib. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'll put the details in. I have actually still got a little bit more of the um, yarn left over, and I'm going to end up having to buy one more ball of the Isaga, which... Um, it's not ideal because I think this will be the third one when I was basically just trying to use up the le leftover holster garn. Um, is it close by for me to show you? No. But anyway, I'm going to knit. Um, yes, it is. Oh, here it is. So this colour is called cider. Um, so I'm going to knit a little top for Lila. Claire Marie asked me if I would do a little top for Lila, so they were matchy-matchy. And I said, oh, well, now the three of us are going to be matchy-matchy. So I will end up buying one more of the um, mohair and silk. And I was really disappointed to find out that 
this little shop in Cambridge where Claire Marie lives called Edie and Co are going to be closing their shop. They are going to be doing things online and I can totally understand why because obviously the overheads of a shop are quite big. Um, but it was just such a lovely place to go to and see the patterns and the, the yarn. But um, they're going to sell everything online now and do it from home. Um, so excited for them and just a little bit disappointed that we have one less yarn store in uh, New Zealand. But such is life. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to do something very similar to mine, I think, for Lila. Because I think short sleeves are much more durable in terms of you can use them summer you can use them winter on top of things and especially for little people and um is you just don't get um dirty sleeves as easily so yeah we'll do that and i'll show you that as it as it's completed uh the other knitted object that i have completed i can't actually show you right now because i've given it to my mum and i am going to do a little video at the end which showing it off but i knitted the pure joy now mine doesn't look quite like that and i will insert a picture here because i had one skein of the lighter color and one of the purple i did it in which if you see in my last episode you'll see which colors i was going to use and um i realized when i was three quarters of the way through that I probably wasn't going to get the bands exactly the same and I'd end up with this tiny fourth band this one here so this tiny fourth this band would have been much smaller and what you can see is you kind of start off over here and you um, do increases both sides and then when you do the purple um, stripe each time you're doing a short row, you're actually increasing at this end here. So you're increasing there, but you're doing short rows and that gives you that sort of wave shape, which is um, fabulous. And um, so I had to change the way that I did that in order to get it all done in one skein. The other thing was I did the first two bands and I hadn't done that second band properly and then I was had a really good thing no and I got it right on the third band but then I had a big hole in the middle and I was just like oh you know what I can live with the hole when it's around my neck nobody's even going to notice but as I got a few rows ahead I was like I don't even think this shawl is for me and um so I had to undo it because I was literally um, at that point where I was just like, it's not for me. And if it was for me, I would happily put up with the mistakes, but it's for my mum. So I wanted it really nice for her because it's a gift and I wanted it to be special. But the other thing is, you know, she may not have great vision, but she can spot a mistake um, and mums like spotting mistakes that's all I can say so <laughs> I just had to get it fixed up and I did and I gave it to her and she loves it so I will show you some pictures towards the end or a little video of us doing it so I'm not sure what it's going to be yet because you know me and editing is just terrible so those are actually uh, my two completed objects I haven't even done one more stitch of the Utavist. Um I need to sit down with it and I you know I have found that it's not a difficult knit but I do need to think about the pattern because I've never done it before and it's quite a quick knit so hopefully next time I'll have something to show you but I'm not going to stress if I don't because I'm sure there's going to be something something to show um, and I don't want to feel that I have to have something completed every single time. I've been really busy with um, the mill, obviously, and I'll give you an update on that, but also life. I mean, we've had birthdays, we've had family coming to stay. Um, every Thursday, so that's today, I look after Freddie and um, Ella, and that's an, a day looking after them. And I just like to enjoy life as well as do um, my knitting, so that's you know, I'm not addicted to it. I just enjoy it. So it's not going to necessarily be that when I do a podcast, I'm always going to have something to show you knitting wise. It might be something that 
something that somebody else has done. And it's definitely going to be one thing because the Dijon Foray, which I talked about last time as one of my whips, I just don't want to do it. I really don't want to do it. I love the jersey and I love the details. Well, it's cardigan. I love the details. So it's a little brioche detail on the increase. But I started it and even on the second row, I worked out that I was not having enough headspace and not even enjoying the increases, or not the increases, the short rows that they were doing or how they were doing it. And I was, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. So I had to go and suck up to my mum and say, mum, please, will you help me with this? Um, because it's something that I think she would enjoy. And I think she is going to enjoy it. But she said, even for her, she's had to sit down and have a good look through the pattern and try and work out um, how to do it because it's not straight well she didn't think it was written in a straightforward manner either but the people i've seen that knit it on youtube have clearly not had the issues that i've had and have enjoyed it so i don't know what's going on with me that i can't read the pattern properly some of that i think is actually headspace because i've got so much on the go that um i don't have that space at the moment to sit down and really work things out and i i want i want it to be easy i don't want it to be a difficult thing i mean it's, i find it quite fascinating how some people when they knit they always want a challenge and um you know other people knit and they just want to be able to repeat the same things over and over and maybe it's that kind of repetitive process of knitting that they enjoy so much um so, yeah, like I say, I've had family visits. So I've had my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law stay. And we've had a great time hanging out. And my sister-in-law does um, knitting. She knits a lot. So she knits for charity. But she did knit two little tops for um, the grandees. And today I'm going to see if they fit um, Freddie and Ella. Because if they do, then they can have them. But if they don't, then I'm so many little girls in this family i'm sure it's going to fit somebody and we'll have a look at that too now um in terms of what's going on with the mill it is really quite mind-boggling for me at the moment so a lot has happened and uh, we have achieved a lot um if i think that a month ago the machines came in I very naively thought we'd set the machines up and then they'd all run and I'd just go through each of the different processes and just organise how I wanted the mill. Well, it hasn't really turned out that way. So with the mill, um, everything came in and the Sparky came and um, set everything up. And we didn't, we didn't run everything that day, um, but we did run the did we run the carding machine? I think we ran the carding machine and it ran fine. And then I went the next day and I put it on and the first roller, which is actually the conveyor belt and what actually feeds the fleece into the carding machine, that wasn't working. So I had to wait a week for the Sparky to come back and it ended up, we had to change some something in the, the electrics, a thing called an inverter, which runs the motor and runs the speed of the motor. But anyway, let me get back to the beginning. So we definitely have um, the tumbler works fine and I've worked, I've put fleece, alpaca fleece into the tumbler and run it and a lot of stuff drops out. What I did learn on that one is not to put too much in there, otherwise it hasn't got the space to, to knock out the vegetable matter or the poop or whatever else is in there and a hell of a lot of dust because you actually put a board underneath and then I also put a bit of lino is that what we call it now um underneath and that caught it and all of that stuff that comes out you can put that in your compost uh, it's well it's biodegradable because it's whatever the animals picked up while they've been out in the in the paddocks so the tumbler works so the next process is the picker and the picker definitely works so it's you put the fleece on the picker and i'm going to put a video at the end because it's got sound on it so it's going to over talk over what I'm saying now. So I'll put the video at the end, but I will put a couple of pictures in. So you put the fleece that's been washed onto the um, 
conveyor belt in there which is a lovely old-fashioned wooden conveyor belt and it goes through that and then it gets picked out and it goes through a sucker into what I call the TARDIS dunny um, that's what Paul and I called it and in there we've sort of set up a little system I say we but Paul and I brainstormed it and he sort of set it up for me so it's, it works really well so it goes down into a big um, wool sack and is collected in there and then from there you can take it to the carding machine so I've done that with some of the the fleece and I've got like several big buckets of this picked fiber but when I put it through the carder I actually found that it didn't it was super fluffy and I, that could be to do with the humidity in the room it or um, just the type of fleece it is I'm not really sure but I feel like when I put it on without having put it through the picker it actually picked up better and it came out better at the end uh, at the other end of the carding machine so I've been doing that um, since then but I need to actually run this stuff through and I might mix it with some other bits as I go along just to 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 use it maybe I should just have one more run where I do that now that I've slowed the machine down so um, when I say I I'm always saying I but whoever helped me so I've been very lucky um, having lots of people around that have been able to help me um, I've, I've also had to call people that I don't know and they've all been very generous with their ideas or suggestions and information so there was one other lady who's got a carding machine um, that I was given a contact for her name's Sharon and um, she was just so generous with her her um, advice and encouragement which was lovely and it didn't end up being that that was the problem what was the problem was just the speed that the motor was going so in terms of the carder it worked the one day it didn't work the next the sparky came he changed the inverter and when we ran it or it just got super fluffy at the top and it was just crazy at the other end and i was like this isn't this is not right um and we thought it might be the humidity it wasn't it was the speed of the roller so once we got the the, the correct settings which were all in the book that Julie gave us, um, we just hadn't seen it, and set it up correctly. Then we um, got a wonderful um, product at the other end. So I'm going to put some pictures up of that um, for you to see. And now the carder runs beautifully. So I can definitely put fleece in the carder and get a product out at the end of that. But, you know, in order to get yarn, it's got to go through the pinning machine, and then from the pinning machine to the spinning machine. So we are now onto the pinning machine and at the next set of, um, well, issues really. So again, we think it's an inverter in, in the electrics of the machine. The actual pinning machine is, is working fine. Um, but when the fleece goes through the pinning machine, it then goes into a thing called a coiler, which it sort of twists the um, fleece and lays it into a big tall barrel and then it goes again through the pinning machine three times I think mostly and then by the time it's done that and it's been coiled the three times it's ready to go into the spinner well the coiler on the end and I'll put a picture of the coiler the coiler on the end is not working it did work once um, because the sparky and i put all the machines on and it rotated and did what it needed to do but again the next day i went it didn't turn at all so something is going on um and we think it's in the inverter so you know when we're sitting there racking our brains i you know i have this fabulous friend called ian and he is very clever about um motors and stuff like that so he is going to come and have a look at that today for me and again he thinks it's the settings on that first um, on the coiler well there's three different inverters in there three different little panels that you have to set up and what well, two you set up one you leave and he's pretty sure that it's something like that so if it's not something he can see then there is a company in Auckland that provide 
the inverters and he's going to give them a ring. I mean, there's no point me ringing them because I have no idea what I'm talking about. And Ian does. So he's going to sort that out for me. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to get the coiler working because once the coiler is working, then we are going to be ready to move on to the last machine, which is the spinning machine. And that machine has been the one that has been worrying the, me the most because I did not have a lot of luck with it when I was at Julie's. But I've spent quite a bit of time getting acquainted with the machine. And I've done that by taking bits off it and cleaning it and polishing it air compressor cleaning it and just really getting acquainted with the machine and um and putting it back together so by the time i get to the spinning machine i hope my confidence level with giving it a good go has increased and um we'll be able to move on so we've actually taken quite a lot of steps forward but stuck at this point can't move it forward so i've just got to wait and be patient so it every step of the way you know, you realise how important knowing people is and contacts and just the generosity of people around you that really want to give you information. I mean, even you guys, I've had so many bits of good advice that I've picked up from from comments that um, people have put in, um, people to look at videos, YouTube channels, all those sorts of um, bits of information which add to the the whole um, big picture of what what you need to do so that's really where the mill is in terms of the creative process uh it's very hard to get your head around um well i don't even want to get my head around being creative i think you need to make space for your your head to be creative it's not something that you can well i suppose some people can i mean some artists will set so many hours aside to a day to to paint or create and some writers set themselves work hours to write and create but I think until the machines are all ready I can't be as I can't have the headspace to be creative I'm trying to to get everything up and running and then after that I'll be able to be creative anyway what I did do because yesterday morning I was like I have not had time to do anything other than just try and get these machines up and running and just make sure they're working I decided instead of just running the machine I would mix two different fleeces I'm going to pop a picture up I'll mix two different fleeces and um, see what comes out the other end and I did do that so I will show you this little bit of fluffiness that came out so I put a cream I put a cream fleece a lamb's fleece into the carder and then I sort of 50 50 mix that with a brown fleece and I mean I don't so much of that to me looks gray now and I love it so it's quite rustic it's very rustic I think rustic is going to be a word that I use a lot in the next um, few podcasts until I kind of get a um more skills and get better at blending better at um pinning all of that and even better at spinning because i spun some up and when i say rustic i feel like this is like going back to when i first started spinning look at it slubs all through it but i did it i've actually made something so i'm very gonna do something with that I might knit it up and just see what it knits up like and I also want to do some over dyeing because I think with this sort of coloring of the base it might be nice to have some it might even sort of look heathered because it, the, the, the base yarn is quite heathered um, so I've got some colors and then I thought I could maybe do some color work and then have this as the base we'll see i'm not sure yet but anyway um i really don't have too much more to talk about um in terms of what i've done but i will definitely have something more to talk about hopefully when i get this pinning machine sorted because it's it's just taking up all my brain space at the moment so hopefully today when ian comes he's able to give me a hand with that 
Um, otherwise, we'll have to put our thinking caps on and just think, who's the next person to call? I have seen a, a YouTube channel, um, Junction Fibre Mill, and they have the same machines as me. And so if all else fails, I might have to make contact with them. And yeah, Little Red, and just see um, if they're able to help me. Because Julie never had any problems with the, the with the coiler, and so she doesn't know anything anything to tell me um, that might help. So I'm just going to have to push forward on my own. Well, not on my own. I'm actually definitely not on my own. I've got all sorts of people that I've um, got help from. So um, I'm very grateful for that. Now um, I'm going to finish off now because there's not much else to talk about and I need to go and pick up Freddie and um, Ella and I will add on the videos at the end and I will hopefully have an update of the, the pin draft in the next few days. Once that's done and the, the whole mill's up, what I'm going to do is get one of my granddaughters to help me and video me showing you all the different machines and we'll actually take a little tour around the, the, the shed um, and have a look at all the different bits of equipment. So hopefully that, I'm really hoping that's the next video. If it's not, it'll be in the next couple of videos for sure. So thank you so much for coming back if you have, and if you've managed to wade your way through this waffly, waffly video. Um, and if you have any comments, just pop them below and give me a thumbs up because that definitely helps on YouTube. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed um i'm blown away by how many people have subscribed already and um very touched so thank you very very much and i will see you next time bye
all fluffy. Some of it's escaping, but most of it, nice and fluffy, ready for the carding machine. I did not expect that. Come on, little Red. Come on, little Red. Good girl. Come on, Red. Come on. Come, little Red. Oh, that was scary. Come on. Come on. I thought I was going to have to jump in. Lucky it's shallow. Come on, little Red. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness! Did you expect that? You did not. Oh, sorry, Paul, I got 